Well, good evening, everybody. Good to be here tonight. Appreciate everybody that's come out to be with us this evening and uh, to join us in the Lord's house. We had a wonderful time at six o'clock this after this evening. Uh, we had a great turnout for our backpack ministry. We were able to pack over how many backpacks was it? Four oh six. So four hundred and six backpacks there this afternoon, this evening. I'm sorry, and uh, we had a great crowd, a good turnout, and uh, a lot of help. And we were able to get 406 backpacks packed up in 30 minutes. That's pretty good. So, um, so uh, praise the Lord and thank the Lord for that and thank the Lord for uh, the opportunity to do that. You know, I'm thankful that uh, the Lord has blessed our church to be able to do that, aren't you? And uh, so we have that opportunity Monday night. So I want to encourage everybody that is able, that can, Please come be with us on Monday night. The backpack giveaway will be from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock here at the church. If you need a place to serve and to help out and to work for the backpack giveaway, you can see Cheryl, you can see Lana, uh, you can uh, see them this evening and or even Sunday, and they will be able to point you in the right direction. So we need a lot of help. We need a lot of volunteers. So the more people that can come and be here and give us the opportunity to pray with the people that come through to be able to invite them and encourage them to church just to be able to give them the, uh, a Bible or to, to speak some encouragement or hope into their life we need everybody and if it's just somebody to hold the door and uh, so just come be with us we need your help we'd love for you to be here at 5 o'clock on Monday evening for the giveaway uh, don't forget, uh, next Wednesday night, the 31st, we'll be back at 6 o'clock for dinner at 6, and that will be our, uh, we'll meet at the fellowship hall at 6 o'clock. We'll have dinner downstairs. Hannah is in charge of that, and we will come back up at 7 in the sanctuary, and the mission team that went to Colorado will be sharing next Wednesday night. So please, everybody that can that's able, please come be with us on Wednesday night. I believe you'll get a blessing out of that, and we're looking forward to getting to share with you what God done in our lives in that trip. So please, everybody that can, will be with us there on Wednesday night. All righty. Well, that's just a couple of announcements that we've got going on, so uh, mark those down on your calendar. They're in the bulletin, and you can also check the church calendar that's hanging back there on the bulletin board. You can look at that, and we've got a few more things coming up in the, the month of August. Uh, so be much be much in prayer for that. Looking forward to uh, the opportunities the Lord has given us there. Let's have a word of prayer, and then uh, April and Cheryl is going to come and lead us in song this evening. Father, we thank you, Lord, for tonight. We thank you for another opportunity that you give us to come and be in your house. God, our prayer is tonight that, Lord, you would just work in the hearts and lives of each one that's here this evening. We pray for your Holy Spirit, God, just to deal in the lives and the hearts and stir them tonight. We pray for... Uh, Lord, your, your song tonight, Lord, that is sung, that, Lord, we could sing that to bring praise and glory and honor to your name. We pray, Father, Lord, as your word is preached, Father, that, Lord, you would stir us and lead us there. God, speak to our hearts and feed our souls. And, Father, we just pray that, Lord, you would help us and be with us in our time of prayer as well, that, Lord, we can come before you tonight in one accord and in one and in unity, Father, as your body and your as your church, Lord, just to, to pray, Father, Lord, for the needs and the requests that, Father, we're going to get to this evening. God, we just love you. Pray your blessing upon the service, blessing upon our children, our youth classes downstairs this evening. And all this we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. You pray for April and Cheryl as they come.
I'm so thankful this evening for the relationship that we can have with the Lord, aren't you? And I'm glad that we can walk with Him. I'm glad we can talk with Him. Uh, you know, God created man in the garden. In the very beginning, when He placed man in the garden, we know that God created man for man to have a relationship with the Lord, didn't we? We know that because we learn and we see that early in the book of Genesis where God had created man, that man had a relationship. He had communion with Almighty God. And the only thing that separated that was sin, disobedience, right? And we know that Jesus took care of that when he went and died on the cross of Calvary for your sin and my sin. And that because of that separation, has sin had separated us from that relationship, that communion, that fellowship that man could have with God, Almighty God. We know that when Christ died on the cross, he was buried and arose the third and glorious day. The veil in the temple was rent from the top to the bottom. That showed and proved, and we know through the Holy Spirit of God, that we can have fellowship and we can have communion with the Father. And I am so thankful for that. I'm glad that God's still in the saving business, aren't you? That was weak, aren't you? All right, all right. Well, it's good to be here this evening. Uh, does anybody have a testimony or a word or anything on your heart this evening that you would like to share? Maybe just a praise that God has done for you this week. Maybe just something that the Lord has, maybe God's answered a prayer for you. Just something you want to testify to the goodness of God. And we'll get to the prayer requests in just a minute, but we'll want to have a time of praise tonight and thanksgiving. So has anybody tonight got a word or anything on your heart of praise? I want to continue to praise the Lord for uh, the effects of the mission trip and just the Holy Spirit just continuing to, I, I hope it stays with me for a long time, the joy of the Lord, the joy, the happiness, the fun, the fellowship that the Lord truly is has blessed me very much with that mission trip. Amen. Appreciate that. I'm reminded of what the Apostle Paul said when he wrote to Timothy. And he said, stir up the gift that is within you. And what he's talking about is that Holy Spirit. Amen. The gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of that calling. That, that salvation gift that we have inside of us. We all need that stir, don't we? From time to time. And so thankful for that. Appreciate Kathleen. Anybody else got a praise tonight? Mom, mom phone now, so she's still a little confused from everything, but she's feeling a lot better. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Anybody else this evening? I pray. We prayed on Sunday. They always ask in Sunday school if there's any requests, and I haven't asked about my dad. He's been real sick since 2021, and we thought we were going to lose him several times. And I tried to get him to go to church, and he always told me no. And he called me, and he asked me, he said, can you bring me a Bible? I don't have one. I said, yeah. So I got him one of those with the extra large letters, so he couldn't miss it. <laughs> and when I got there, he said, will you take me to church? And I was like, uh, yeah, absolutely. So all of my Sunday school girls are praying for my daddy. Thank you. Amen. Blessing. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Let's keep praying for Kayla's daddy. That uh, would be wonderful to see him saved, wouldn't it? And 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 see him get in church and begin to follow the Lord. Anybody else tonight? Anybody else have a praise or anything on your heart? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Thank God for that. Amen. Anybody else? Yeah, go ahead.
appreciate that. Amen. Appreciate that. Thank the Lord. Appreciate the obedience and following the Lord this evening. Anybody else tonight? Praise, testimony, song, anything on your heart this evening? Does anybody have a prayer request this evening? I know we have several this evening on our prayer list. It's in our bulletin. I want to read over those. And then if anybody has any that we need to add, we will this evening. Uh, let's continue to pray and remember Carolyn Richardson. Let's remember Carolyn as we pray. Continue to remember Catherine and Benny Caps in our prayers. I believe Catherine and Benny both are in the nursing home. So we want to remember, we want to pray for them tonight. Uh, continue to remember Brother Clarence Robbins when we pray. Remember Emily Link in our prayers. Uh, we want to continue to remember Brother James Sollins. Remember his brothers in prayers this evening when we pray. Uh, let's remember uh, Kathleen's nephew. And I know Kathleen got a praise on him while we were gone to, to, to Colorado. So let's continue to remember Keith when we pray. Remember them, their family. Let's continue to remember all the children. Uh, that attended not only Vacation Bible School this past summer, but let's pray for the ones that attended the sports camp and the ones that we had the opportunity to uh, just sow some seed, the gospel seed in their heart and in their life. And let's just pray that the Lord would continue to work in their heart, work in their life. Uh, pray for Bible release time. That'll be coming up here soon, so we want to remember that in prayer. And uh, we also want to remember the backpack ministry, of course, on Monday night. We want to pray for that as well. Uh, we want to remember, continue to pray, remember Christy nicely in our prayers. Uh, let's remember Brother Ronnie Robbins in prayer. Remember uh, Trish Bateson. Uh, and we, as Roger said, we got a praise on his mother, so thank the Lord for that tonight. Uh, let's remember Helen Robbins. Uh, let's continue to remember Leon, uh, which is Calvin's friend, Calvin Gilbert. Remember him as we pray. And, of course, we want to remember most, and first and foremost tonight, we want to remember the lost. And how many in here tonight have somebody that's on your heart that you know that's lost and that you're praying for? So we want to remember the lost tonight. We want to remember people that we have in our church. You know, you never know. I can stand up here Sunday and Wednesday, and I can look out over the crowd, and everybody looks like they're saved. But you know what? You never know. And let's pray that we've got some people in our church that's coming that's lost and don't know Christ as their Savior. Let's pray the Holy Spirit would work in their life, work in their heart, bring them to a place that he shows them they're lost and they need to be saved. Let's remember children that we've got that's coming to the age of accountability. We've got several here in our church that's coming to that age. Let's pray for them. Let's remember them tonight in prayer as well. And, of course, we want to remember our country. We want to remember our military, first responders tonight as we pray. So we want to remember these. Does anybody else have a request that we need to add to our list tonight? remember Billy's friend Jerry Browning tonight in prayer uh, stage 4 cancer let's pray for him pray for his family let's remember them tonight in prayer anybody else he's fighting a lot of demons let's remember and Taylor he's not going to be with us very long let's remember Taylor's brother in prayer what was his name Taylor Guy Guy Remember him. Anybody else? Remember this. Remember anybody else tonight? I'd like to remember uh, Darla Bowman Lucas. She um, is a friend and was also married to a cousin, and she is starting up next month a support group. She goes over to Alder Springs. She's a member over there. 
and she's starting up a support group for family members who uh, have had, whether it's friends or family, die from suicide. Mm -hmm. Her husband uh, committed suicide about eight years ago, mm -hmm. and she had two young children, and she's really, the past several years, had a hard, hard time, and she said this was just something that had really been laying on her heart to do, yeah. but she's been there, and the Lord had brought her through it, and so, she said, I just think a lot of prayers that I can maybe try to help and reach out and be there for other people. So she's going to be doing it once a month over there in Calvary Springs. Let's remember this. Let's pray for Darla uh, as she starts this. Pray the Lord gives her strength to help her do this. And I believe, <clears throat> I believe that's a, needed, a big need uh, in this community. So we want to remember that. Anybody else before we pray tonight? Nathan Potter. Remember the Nathan Potter family in prayer. We want to remember uh, Melanie this evening in our prayers as we had uh, read there last Wednesday night that she is uh, planning on trying to go to Uganda coming up. And so we want to pray for her and uh, so we're, uh, if there's anybody that would like to help with that, you're more, more than welcome to get with Melanie and help her with that. So we want to pray for her and her upcoming trip there. Um, let's continue to remember and pray, as I mentioned there, something about a Sunday or two ago, and um, maybe last Wednesday night as well, is something that uh, the Lord's had on my heart for uh, a little while now. But, you know, we are a great supporting church we're a great cooperating church and supporting church we give to missions we give to uh, the golden offering through Tennessee Baptist we give to Annie Armstrong we give to uh, uh, all the offerings that, that we can we're a great supporting church we, we give to missions and those things and and uh, I believe we're great in that but we need to move I feel like from not only a cooperating church and a supporting church but we need to take another step and be a sending church and an ascending church is sending people out on mission for Christ. And so I pray for that. We need to be praying for that. I want to pray. I think the only way that that happens, number one, is through prayer. Because God has to deal in your heart and in my heart and in the lives and the hearts of the church of the people. So that begins with prayer. Uh, prayer is how that starts. So I want to pray tonight that, that God would move this church into being a sending church. So let's be praying for that this evening as well. Uh, anybody else before we go to the Lord in prayer? Anybody else tonight before we pray? Well, if everybody can and is able tonight, let's come down here and let's fill the altar up and let's pray this evening as we pray together and as we pray for these requests. We want to remember them tonight in prayer. So everybody that can and will, let's gather around the altar here this evening.
that you make your way back to your seats this evening. We are going to be in the book of Acts tonight. Uh, we're going to be reading from Acts chapter number four this evening, Acts chapter four. And uh, we ask for your prayers this evening as we try our best just to uh, follow the Holy Spirit and, and share what the Lord has given us and what he's laid on our heart for tonight. Acts chapter 4, and uh, we're going to look at verses 32 through 37 this evening. Acts chapter 4, uh, verses 32 through 37. And uh, as you're getting there, uh, we have uh, continued to uh, just try to follow the Holy Spirit and follow the Lord as uh, we continue to read and study through the, the book of Acts. And uh, that's just really where the Lord has had me at here the last little bit is in the book of Acts. And um, so uh, it's, it's been a, a joy for me. Uh, the Lord just continues to speak, speaks to my heart, speaks to me in uh, this book and continues to show me uh, things each time I sit down to try to read and study and pray uh, for the message that the Lord would have for us. So tonight we're there in the book of Acts chapter 4. Uh, as we continue on through the fourth chapter, starting with verse number 32. And uh, the scripture's on the screen tonight. I encourage you to follow along either on the screen or in uh, your Bible this evening. But uh, starting with verse 32, the Bible says, And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. And for you Bible highlighters and underliners, I'd underline that tonight that those believers that believed, the multitude of them that believed, were of one heart and one soul. That's important tonight. That is important as not only believers, but as a church body, as followers of Jesus Christ, is that we be of one heart and one soul. Amen? Moving on, it says, Neither said any of them, that aught of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them. And brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, or some translations as jo and Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, or some uh, the word consolation, or some translations even says the son of encouragement. The son of encouragement, he was a Levite and of the country of Cyprus, having lamb, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. That's all we'd like to read this evening. As we look back here tonight, starting with verse number 32, if the, the main thought tonight of the message and the main point that we want to look at was this in verses 32 through 37. The main topic, the main point is this tonight. This multitude or this group, this body of believers, this church, they had everything in common. They had everything in common. As the Bible said, they had all things in common. And what we want to look at, the first thing that we find that this multitude of believers, that what they had in common or what was in common or of unity and oneness, number one, was right there in verse number 32 tonight as we read, as the Bible said, and the multitude of them that believed, this group of believers, here's what they had. They were of one heart and one soul. That was so important because what that tells us about this group of believers, about this church, about these followers of Jesus Christ was this. They had one heart and they had one soul. 
And they, there was a oneness. There was a unity among this group of believers. And I want to say this tonight. It is so important for you and for me and for us as First Baptist Church of Mainerville, as a local body of believers, as a local New Testament church, it is so important, I would say it is so crucial that we have a oneness about us, that we have unity about us, that we be of one heart and one soul. Because, listen, for us to be fruitful and for us to be impactful for the kingdom of God, there's got to be a unity and a oneness among us all. Now, I'm sure we all have different thoughts. We all have different opinions. We've all got different ways of how we should do things or what we should do or what we should sing or what we should say or how we should do this or how we should say that or do that. But here's the main focus tonight is this, is that every one of us here tonight that have been saved and born again by the blood of Jesus Christ and are a blood-bought child of the King, we ought to have one heart and a unity and a oneness and one heart and one soul for this and that is for the advancement of the kingdom of God and that the kingdom of God would grow and that more people would be saved and more people would come to know Christ as their Savior and as their Lord and to have a kingdom mindset and a kingdom heart means this is that we are a witness and we are a light to anyone and everyone that we come in contact with on a daily basis. And it's showing the love of Jesus and may never ever seeing the fruit of it. Let me say that again. It's about sharing the love of Jesus and sharing the gospel of Christ without Seeing the fruit. Now that's hard, ain't it? Because when we do the backpack ministry or we do any kind of other local ministry, when we do trunk or treat or when we do this or we do that or when we do Bible release time or, or whatever it is that we're doing here locally, we want to do these things for one, to be able to share the gospel, to share the love of Christ, to tell them with the opportunity to share the gospel that they may come to the saving knowledge and the understanding of Jesus Christ. But we also have that opportunity to invite and encourage someone to come and be in church. Now there's going to be, here's the reality of it, not everybody that we talk to, not everybody that we invite will come to this church. Not everybody that we share the gospel with will come to know Christ or will we will get to see them come to know Christ. But we should be doing it anyway. We've got to have a kingdom heart and a kingdom mindset. And I've, the best example that I believe that we can give you tonight is this, is I think about Allison and Zoe. They went to Honduras. They shared the love of Christ. They shared the gospel with the people of Honduras. They were a witness and a light for Jesus in Honduras, in for the kingdom of God. And yet they got to see this lady saved and come to know Christ. But what they, one thing that they may never get to see is they may never get to see the many more people that are living in Honduras come to know Jesus Christ. But you know what? That's okay if they don't meet them or they don't see them on this side of heaven. But one of these days in glory, they're going to get to meet those ones that come to know Christ as their savior that they had a part of and there was an impact there for the kingdom of God and it's the same way for us when we went to, to Denver and I think about our brothers and sisters here tonight that when they go to Uganda it's the same way there you know it's all about having a kingdom mindset 
And as a church, we've got to have a oneness and a unity of one heart and one soul moving forward that we're going to have a heart and we're going to have a desire to see this community saved and come to know Christ. But one thing that we're going to have a heart for is that we're going to share and we're going to tell them about Jesus. And we're going to take the opportunity to tell somebody that we work with or that we go to school with or that we're at at the grocery grocery store or down at Hardee's or wherever it may be that God opens up doors and opportunities that we walk through and tell them about Jesus having a oneness the right one heart that unity that one heart and soul this multitude had this in common they had this in common that they wanted to go share Jesus didn't they what else did this multitude have in common? Well, we find here that the multitude of believers, that they were unselfish. They were unselfish. This multitude, this body of believers were unselfish. They had that in common amongst them. This church was unselfish. They were willing to share. They had a sharing attitude. They had an attitude or a heart of taking care of one another. Not only that, it didn't matter if they were, they were going to take care of those people that were in that body and in that multitude and in that group. But you know what? They had a heart to take care of those people that were not part of that fellowship you talking about those people that was out on the street those people that were out there that maybe didn't look like you or didn't look like me or didn't dress like we do or don't talk like we do or they don't smell like you and I do or they're a part of the same socio-economic class that we are but listen my friend they had a commonality about them that they had a heart and they had oneness they had unity to go and to share and to meet the need that was there in that community and as a church a new testament body of christ being the body of christ being the hands and feet of jesus we need to be about meeting the need and the gospel teaches us this jesus always met a physical need and it was always followed by a spiritual need don't get me wrong here. Don't get mad at me. But I'm going to say this. You know what separates the body of Christ and the church of the living God from the Masonic Lodge or the Shriners or uh, any other great organization that's out there? You know what separates us? Is yes, they can meet a need physically, right? you know what the church of the living God the body of Christ you and I that's been born again by Jesus you know what we can do not only that God has blessed us to be able to meet a physical need but you know what we can go a step further and we have been blessed and we've been given the gift of salvation and not only can we meet a physical need but we can meet the spiritual need of that person or that individual or that family as well and you know what that spiritual need is their spiritual need is lostness they they need Jesus in their life. They need Jesus as their Savior. They need Jesus ruling and reigning in their heart and in their life. And you and I tonight, each one of us sitting here that's been saved by God's amazing grace, you've been commissioned to do that. We've all been commissioned to not only meet the physical, but the spiritual need. This multitude of believers, they were of one heart and soul. They had that common thread. That other common thread they had was they were unselfish. They had a sharing attitude. They were about taking care of not only one another, but taking care of others. And I think about what Jesus said. What did he say? The greatest commandment is this. Is love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And the second is like this. Love your what? Neighbor as yourself. Boy, Jesus pegged us, didn't he? I mean, how many loves their self here tonight? Don't be so humble. Raise your hand. We all love ourselves, don't we? Yes, we do. We love ourselves. Man, we're so in love with who we are. <laughs> Jesus said, love that neighbor as yourself. That same amount of love that you love yourself with. 
or you love that significant other with. And love that neighbor with that type of love too, right? That's what Jesus is saying. They had an attitude willing to share and take care of one another. And where do we see that? Well, we find it right here. What do they say? said, neither said any of them that they ought of the things which he possessed was his own. What he was saying was this. Nobody in that church was about saying, oh, this is mine, okay? Nobody can have this because this is mine. I'm not going to share it. No. But they had all things in common, and they were willing to share and distribute to those that were in need. What else do we find thirdly? Look what we find here. Not only did they have all things in common, but also here's what they did. Look at verse number 33. And it says, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. What does that tell us? The apostles were living witnesses of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And they began to share and testify of what they had seen with their own two eyes that Jesus had arose. They witnessed. They testified. They told people about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the Bible said that there was great power that was given unto them to do that. That was from the Lord. But not only that, there was great grace that was upon them all guys listen you and I we are no different we can testify and we can witness of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ can't we if you've truly been saved by God's amazing grace you have experienced the death the burial and the resurrection because the Bible says behold if any man be in Christ he is a what new Creature, that all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We are a new man and a new creature in Christ Jesus. We can testify, we can witness of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Look what he says right there in verse 34. It says, Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold, and they laid them down at the apostles' feet, and the distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. I think this right here just shows us the heart of these followers of Christ. It shows us the heart of the church, and it shows us the heart of these believers. That their heart was this. They were so focused on the mission of Jesus Christ that they were a, they took what they had sold and they said, you know what, we're going to bring it and we're going to lay it at the apostles' feet and we're going to make sure that people are taken care of, that nobody's going to lack in anything, that the needs are met. We're going to make sure that we're going to take what we have been given, that God has blessed us with, and we're going to use this for the ministry and for the mission of Jesus Christ. Now, I'll say this right here. The only way that this happens is that somebody takes every bit of the money that they made off of selling a piece of property or a land or a house and they bring it and they give it to the church and they give it to the apostles and they give it to them for the mission of Jesus Christ. You want me to tell you how the only way that happens? The only way that happens is when the Holy Spirit of God moves on somebody and encourages them and leads them by the Holy Spirit to do that. And how that happens is when God gets a hold of somebody's heart and gives them a heart for the kingdom of God. That they see that everything else in this world, that they're just a stranger and they're just a pilgrim and they're passing through. But man, there's a greater reward in glory. And they choose to invest in something greater and better than anything else that this world has to offer. I've always been amazed of that. 
that they had such a heart that was for the mission and the kingdom of God. And the only way that happens is when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of somebody and does that. Closing up here tonight, look at verse 36 and 37. An interesting character shows up on the, on the scene here tonight. The Bible says, And Joseph, or Joseph, who the apostles had surnamed by the name of Barnabas. We know that he was the son of encouragement. That was what his name meant. Barnabas was an encourager. And we find right here that Barnabas was a Levite. Now, what, what is interesting about the Levite? Well, Levite was a tribe, wasn't it? A tribe of Israel, one of the 12 tribes of Israel, Levi. But you know what the interesting thing about the tribe of Levite was? It was the priestly tribe. That was where the priests come from, was the tribe of Levi. That was where Aaron come from. He was a Levite. He was the high priest. Moses was a Levite. The, the, the tribe of Levi was set aside and sanctified only for the use of God for the priestly office. So we find he was a Levite, but not only that, we find that he was of the country of Cyprus. Now, that's a whole other message in itself, but the gospel got to Cyprus. And Barnabas was a product of the gospel being preached in Cyprus and him coming to know Christ as his Savior and as his Lord. And you say, well, preacher, how did the gospel get to Cyprus? Well, you remember we read in Acts on the day of Pentecost? And all those different people that were Jews that came to Jerusalem and gathered there in Jerusalem that day for the festival and the feast of, Pas of Pentecost, you know, they come from Cyprus. They come from all different parts across the map. And they heard the gospel and they were saved. They got born again. They come to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And when they went back to wherever they lived, you know what they did? They shared the gospel. Barnabas was a product of somebody just sharing the gospel that had been saved. But we find right here Barnabas, right here, he had a heart. He had land, he sold it, he brought the money, he laid it at the apostles' feet. We find a man here once again that had a heart for the kingdom of God. He had a heart for seeing people saved. He had a heart for people coming to become a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ. And as a church, we need to have that heart. We need to have a heart for this community. We need to have a heart for this state. We need to have a heart for this country. We need to have a heart for this world that they would come to know Christ as their Savior and as their Lord and that more people would become followers and believers of Jesus Christ. So I pray tonight that we pray that God would give us a kingdom heart and a kingdom mindset to see lost people saved. But as Barnabas was an encourager, I want to encourage you tonight to be an encourager. Be an encourager to your family. Be an encourager to your friends, to your neighbors, your co-workers, your children, your grandchildren, their friends, whoever you come in contact with. It might be that cashier down there at Hardy's. It might be the cashier up Food City. It may be wherever it is you come in contact with somebody. Be an encourager to them, just as Barnabas was. But I believe us as a church... If we could pray these three things tonight, is our prayer would be, Lord, give us, help us to be a church with one heart and one soul. Lord, help us to have a heart and help us to be unselfish. Help us be willing to share. Help us be willing to make sure the needs met. Help us be willing to love our neighbor, to take care of one another, and to take care of those that may not look like us, talk like us, smell like us, or like us. But then not only, not only that, that we would have all things in common. Amen? And that we, as those apostles, would witness and testify of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ that you and I have personally experienced in our own lives as salvation. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for tonight. God, we thank you for your word. And Lord, our prayer tonight is this. Our prayer is, Lord, is that you would help us as a church body to have one heart, to have one soul. 
God, I pray that you would help us, Lord, to have a kingdom heart and a kingdom mind tonight. Lord, help us to have a desire to see lost people saved. Father, not only in this community, Father, across our state, across our country, and across the world. Father, I pray that there would be a oneness and a unity among the believers in this local body. Lord, I pray, Father, that, Lord, you would help us, God, to be unselfish. Lord, I pray that, God, you would help us to have a selfless attitude, a sharing attitude. Lord, I pray that you would help us be about loving our neighbor, and, but loving you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves. Lord, help us, Father, to take care of one another. Help us to take care of the needs that, Father, we see right next door. Father, in this community, in this city. Father, I pray that you would help us, Lord, as the apostles were, that as they witnessed of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, help us to witness and testify of the resurrection power of, of your son Jesus that's in our heart and in our lives. Father, we love you. We thank you. And, Lord, I pray as Barnabas was an encourager, Help us, Lord, to be an encourager tonight and the rest of this week to those that we may come in contact with. And, Lord, all this we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. As we stand tonight, as they sing, the altar is open. If you feel the need to come and pray, we encourage you just to mind the Lord this evening. Follow him. Follow the Holy Spirit tonight. cross I'll carry till I see Jesus. Amen. Amen. I hope that's our prayer tonight is that uh, we have taken up the cross. We have deny ourselves. We take up the cross. We follow Jesus. And that's such a daily, daily thing, isn't it? Uh, you know, I can take up the cross today. I can deny myself today. I can be a follower of Jesus and follow him and follow the Holy Spirit. And man, tomorrow I can get myself and flesh all in the way. And not die out to me and die out to old Corey and try to go my own way instead of go the way of the Lord. And it's a daily thing. Paul said, I die daily to myself. And Jesus said, we must deny ourselves. We must die to ourselves and follow him. So I hope tonight that that, that is our prayer. Is, uh, I believe uh, the Bible teaches us and tells us is that uh, it's not I that live, but it is Christ that lives in me, isn't it? And so thankful for that this evening. It's been good to be in the Lord's house. If you've enjoyed being here tonight, say amen. amen. It's been good to be here. And thank the Lord for his good Holy Spirit. Thank him for his presence here tonight. Appreciate everybody that's come out to be with us this evening. And uh, it's been such a joy to have everybody. And thank the Lord for all the ones that helped us at 6 o'clock. And uh, it, was, it was such a time, a good time and a blessing to see everybody down there working together. And uh, I can't uh, help but to say I appreciate just what I've got to see as just your pastor over the last couple months. And, and just for vac Vacation Bible School, the sports camp, the mission trip, downstairs tonight, it is such an encouragement to see uh, when I can just kind of step back and see everybody working together and, and, and working together as one for one common goal and one common purpose. That's encouraging. And, and I thank the Lord for that. So I praise him for that this evening. All righty. Lord, we'll be back for Sunday school at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. Worship will be at 11. We encourage everybody to come be a part. Looking forward to what God has in store. I want to encourage everybody, let's be praying this week, all right? Let's pray tomorrow. Let's pray uh, Friday. Let's pray Saturday. Let's pray Sunday morning. And be ready and prayed up when we come in here. 
looking forward to what God has in store. And if God gives you something to say or do Sunday morning, I encourage you to do that. Mind the good Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Billy, will you dismiss us tonight in prayer?